Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the prequel to Apple Silicon Max, which is the T2 chip and its operating system known as Bridge OS. The announcement of Apple's transition to their own ARM-based silicon for their Mac products is considered the third major Mac processor switch after PowerPC in 1994 and Intel in 2006. Although the first Apple Silicon Macs are due to be released in late 2020, Apple has already been slowly transitioning their computers to an ARM architecture since 2016, primarily with Apple's T1 and T2 security chips. Apple first started using their own silicon processors in the original iPad and the iPhone 4, known as the Apple A4 chip. Their own system on a chip, or SOC for short, meant not only could they design the processors, but control their integration across their hardware and software of their devices. Let's first talk about the T1 chip. The T1 security chip in the 2016 and 2017 Touch Bar MacBook Pros operates as a secure enclave to register and encrypt user fingerprints for Touch ID. The various users of Touch ID include secure Apple Pay processing and user authentication. The T1 also controls the FaceTime camera and microphone and powers the Mac Touch Bar. The silicon chip runs what Apple calls Embedded OS, or EOS for short. It is a variant of watchOS according to a system image dump, and the T1 itself has the model identifier of iBridge 1. Let's dive deep into the details of Apple's T2 chip. The iMac Pro introduced in December 2017 was the first Mac to possess Apple's T2 security chip, and with it, the Apple Silicon Mac transition got significantly closer to arrival. This chip was implemented in all Apple Macs introduced from 2018 onwards. Features of the T2 chip include all T1 chip functions, managing the SMC, image signal processing, being an HEVC video transcoder, controlling the audio, encrypting the internal SSD, secure boot, a rewritten firmware structure, and for the first time, powering the keyboard and trackpad on portable devices such as the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. The T2 is a 64-bit ARM V8 silicon which is powered by BridgeOS, the successor to the T1's EOS. Because the T2 uses so many different control functions, BridgeOS is used to communicate with the x64-based Intel processor and macOS. The first version of BridgeOS was version 2.0 and it had this startup chime. Now I don't know if this chime was able to be actually played when the Mac turned on. It was changed in later BridgeOS versions. As of this current video, the current BridgeOS version is version 4.6. Throughout the BridgeOS 4.6 image, there appears to be different reverb settings for what I believe are the internal speakers, and assets for the touch bar which shows images of brightness controls and function keys. Essentially in a way, BridgeOS is the T2's Mac firmware. There are also files for Siri sound effects, and I've also discovered a new version of the iconic Mac startup chime. Let's look at the startup sequence of the T2 chip. With the T2, the Mac startup process has changed significantly. Before the T2, the process starts with the user powering on the Mac, which causes the boot ROM to perform a power on self test, and if successful, the startup chime is played and the UEFI firmware is loaded, which subsequently loads macOS. A post failure would mean SMC beeping tones until the user turns the Mac off. Now with T2 Max, the booting sequence is separated into two different stages. One, booting the T2 chip, and two, the T2 chip booting the rest of the Mac. The T2 boot ROM activates and it loads the iBoot bootloader and verifies it. This is a similar process to iOS and watchOS devices. Then iBoot will load the BridgeOS kernel, which then loads kernel extensions including the SMC controller and the UEFI firmware. Finally, BridgeOS enters a low power state, ready to boot the Mac with an SMC response, such as a user pressing the power button, or for portable Macs, either opening the lid, pressing any key, or clicking the trackpad. BridgeOS would then wake up and activate the loaded UEFI firmware. The screen turns on, the startup chime plays if enabled, the Apple logo is displayed, all drives are mounted, and the startup file is selected for booting. At this point, secure boot checks would take place to ensure the startup file is authenticated using digital signatures. If BridgeOS cannot verify the authenticity of a boot file, macOS recovery is launched to give the user a warning. This also happens if you boot a later version of macOS than the one that the current BridgeOS supports. 
The secure boot security settings can be changed in macOS Recovery, along with enabling booting off external media, such as a flash drive. If the verification for the startup file is successful, the OS is loaded and in the case of macOS, users get taken to the main desktop. The T2 chip also introduced an important feature in 2019 known as Activation Lock. This feature stops other users from getting into your Mac if it's lost, stolen or misplaced. The Mac owner can sign into iCloud and lock the device remotely. If the OS has already been wiped, the Mac will be unusable regardless until you sign in with the previously linked Apple ID. Now some of the things I find interesting with the T2 firmware is the fact that there's this image lying around of an iPad recovery process. One important note is that if the T2 chip bricks, which is very unlikely, you may lose all your data, so make sure you back up your important files to an external drive or the cloud, just in case. In most cases, the T2 chip can be flashed, meaning users could go onto Apple Configurator and choose to either revive or restore the Bridge OS. The latter option results in the loss of your data, however. So that was an explanation of the T2 chip and Apple's Bridge OS, the prequel to Apple Silicon Max. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you all for watching and see you all in my next video.